Hello and a very warm welcome to Brexbox. Instead of relying on our friends in the media to give us a fair hearing, we thought we'd take matters into our own hands. Yes indeed, so what we've done is we've set up our own YouTube channel to keep you well informed and entertained about all things Brexit. Follow us for regular panels and debates about all we get up to behind the scenes as MEPs. So we want this to be about politics, but what will politics be without some mischief? Yes, I think that's very well said, Louis. So stay tuned for some irreverent chat and a big slice of all-you-can-eat Brexit. Cheers, cheers, cheers. To, to all and, things Brexit. Yes, and to all the voters back home that yes, gave us this platform absolutely. to speak for the for the left behind areas that what, have been so ignored. Yeah, I was going to so say, long. well said, Belinda. So um, it's been a tumultuous first few days. Yeah, it has been intense. Could you try to surmise for people at home what what it's been like? What's yeah. what's the emotional journey been like? For me, it felt very much um, like it wasn't. 29 MEPs walking into the European Parliament today in Strasbourg. It was 17.4 million people that we were bringing with us yep. to give them a voice and a platform about the way they've been so mistreated and also demonised for three years just for simply voting in good faith to leave the political institutions of the EU. So I felt very emotional about what it. What about you, Louis? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it was, for me, there was mixed emotions coming into the Parliament to vote, um, you know, because we shouldn't really be here. We, we, we voted to leave three years ago and we're still here. We need to change that. We need to leave. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the things that I think people haven't quite understood is, is we are here because we have a job to do, a job that we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. yeah. But nevertheless, we have to do it well. Yeah. But you and I have had this conversation. Yeah. It, it's been an emotional journey on a personal level. It has. So, I mean, many of us, you know, aren't what you would call career politicians. Uh, we got into this um, through passion. Um, I surrendered all of my livelihood to do this. I had to give up all of my work. Um, and that also comes at great personal kind of cost you know, because you put yourself on the head of a parapet, you're out there. But that's part of the game. I think all of us around this table and within the Brexit Party are having a sort of, um, a, a sort of baptism of fire but it toughens you up quick. But we mustn't let that get in the way because um, there's a tremendous positivity out there. What I'm getting from the people back in Britain is you know, thanks. You know, thank you for standing up for us. Because mm. so many people, as you mm. know, on the campaign trail, mm. all around the regions, around the UK, had almost given up on politics. Yeah. I think, I yeah, think we're absolutely. here to, to reinvigorate that and to give them some hope. And we're going to work as hard as we can for the regions and for the UK. So one of the things that I think we've harnessed very well is social media, because mm. I think you, know, you mm. can wear your heart on mm. your sleeve. That's right. But there are downsides. And I think all of us have really felt, I think, really felt Very that. Much. Very much so. And, and, but what's interesting, I find, is that the people that were most vocal about us uh, standing, uh, turning away from the anthem were yeah. the same people in 2016 that were outraged and offended and mortified at us voting to leave the EU. Yeah. So yeah. actually, for us being called Nazis and fascists and racists all the time means very little now. We just are standing up for democracy. We're, we're standing up for the people that have had their vote so misused and abused, in, in my opinion. I think the best way of, of framing this is like, how can we be so outraged about us turning our, our backs on a piece of music mm. when the British Parliament turned its back on 17.4 million people? Well, I think so was, there was something yeah, yeah. else yesterday. If you remember what they said, you know, please stand for, for the national anthem yeah. of yeah. Europe. There yeah. is no national yeah. anthem Correct. of Europe. Yeah. This yeah. is a federal yeah. Europe. Yeah. Remember, this was never agreed by anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a step closer to federal integration, to a European army, and to a, a European yeah. Yeah. anthem. And it's really interesting. Like straight afterwards, I was getting a, a cup of coffee in the queue at the mm. MEP canteen. I was with a Dutch liberal who said, yeah, I saw the protest. He said, but we, we want a United States of Europe. We need to be able to conquer, he said, mm. um, the rest yeah, of yeah, Europe. Sort of what? We need to be able to it? conquer China, conquer Japan, uh, conquer... Uh, I said, what do you mean? Mm. He said, well, uh, uh, democratically, and militarily, and he's not talking about the, Euro the European army. So all of the things that we were told were myths, mm. that the people in this very chamber mm. actually want to happen. We were right, mm. and, we, and we are still right to be fighting this, isn't mm. this federalism? Yeah. Mm. It's mm. deeply concerning the way they're doing it as well, because it's, it's a creeping federalism that's, be, that's been done through the back door. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it goes against our sense of fair play yeah. as Brits. It's just not morally right to do that to that's people. That's a really interesting point. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I, I think the, the, the reason that they're doing that is that they know that if people realised what was happening, then no one would want this. Mm. Who would actually want this? It's, mm. it's, it's, it has to be done by But stealth. of course the EU has a track record of doing this. So you put something mm. to the vote and they don't get the result they want. They then put it to the vote again. And if yeah. they yeah. don't get the result they want, they bring it in anyway. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. like Article 13. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they lobbied for that. The Parliament, the MEPs were supposed, we, we were supposed to have this power. Mm. They voted no, and the EU Commission took that rejection, re-wrapped it, put it back, put it back, until they yeah. voted yes. And yeah. that's what it's like, that's reality. So I, I was just going to ask you, so I overnight had a lot of messages on Twitter, not all knives, you mm -hmm. know, saying about our actions and stuff. Louis, perhaps I could ask you, I think our stance was dignified. You may not agree with it. What about what did you think about um, the um, the orange T-shirts from certain other political oh, yeah. parties? Oh my goodness! I, it's, it's, I, I just find it bizarre because you know what we did was we stood there, we turned our backs uh, to 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 the Parliament there, and we've got people running around the Parliament with profanity written across their T-shirts, and no one's saying anything say about it. that. You can say so, it. So they, they've got bollocks to <laughs> yes. Brexit on yeah. their T-shirt. Uh, I, I was doing an interview the other which, day, and which they, fundamentally is against the will of the people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 17.4 million people, but they, mm. they, they just don't they don't believe that. And so, you know, I was, I was doing an interview the other day and I was, I, I was talking about, you know, you couldn't take this into a school, yeah. bollocks to Brexit on it. What, no. does, what sort of message does that send out? But yeah, we're vilif vilified as being the nasty people. So can I just debate. ask you, you said something really interesting to me earlier, which mm. is that on Twitter mm. and over the long, and certainly over the last few hours, we yeah. felt quite isolated and yeah. quite attacked. Yeah. But you said something really interesting to me, which was that people who are who voted to leave are mm. frightened yeah. to become engaged. Mm. Part, part of the issue is it's become so febrile. You know, we've had such a, a period of, of I think the, the the kind of isolationism of Remainers being mm. fed mm. and the hostility um, heightening that none of them thought we were capable of becoming politicians. Mm. Was well, he's a moron from Loader magazine? Mm. You're a doctor <laughs> off the telly. Mm. No, like, Who did the paranormal yeah, show? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, but then when we walked through the door uh, yesterday, they're like, uh -huh. okay. The, this yeah. is real now, yeah. so let's start attacking them with even more vigour. Mm. Yeah. But what's going to happen is this will all die down, yeah. and, and we will fight for the breaks that the people deserve. And, and, and we must not get sidetracked by, by, by the negativity, because, mm. but you're right, our, our allies are standing away, because they, they don't want to get yeah. trolled and dragged into it, but mm. we are here, we, we're, we're big, we're ugly, well, you guys aren't, but we can <laughs> well. do this. Yeah. Now, but can. it's important that people watching this understand that we are here to fight, mm. and we're here to win. Mm. Absolutely. And we're not going to give in. Mm. And a few tweets is not going to stop us. Yeah. Do, has yeah. it stiffened your resolve? Has it strengthened it? Uh, for, yes. me, for, for me, yes. yeah, it has. Because, you know, I got into this because I felt, felt it was really important that people understood and realised that there are people out there, there are gay black people that mm. voted for Brexit. Mm. And so it, it really makes me angry when, you know, we're, we're sort of portrayed as these white, racist, homophobic yeah. people, uh, all the same, very ignorant. Which and clearly know, isn't true. And yeah. didn't know what we mm. voted for. It's frustrating. So really important for me and it has it has included okay so well. so uh, let's move now to the practicalities of this i don't know about you guys but when i arrived it's very overwhelming it's a huge yeah. building belinda what's it been like in terms of the geography of this oh, it's like um <laughs> a sort of rabbit warren um yeah. and it also reminds me of a scene from wizard of oz when when dorothy and the scarecrow <laughs> yeah. and the tin man yeah. are walking towards a beautiful field of poppies and the scent is so sweet and, and it's all so beautiful and everyone's mm. so happy and then they get put to sleep and that's what it feels like here in the <laughs> is that it all looks very shiny you get you know everyone's very smiley and it's also lovely and everyone's very, very nice smiley. to each other they but, but underneath i do feel there is a little bit of a sinister tone in terms yeah. of what we are being led so into I, so i agree i feel it's like the truman show yeah 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 it's just a bit too yeah. nice yeah, yeah. I was like, um, yeah. but, but you everyone here hates you apparently because well, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, 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 no. why are you in the dungeon I, i've like been here five minutes and people must hate me so yeah so my office as you know <laughs> is like miles away from anyone else and I'm in the basement they put me in the basement I actually went to speak to somebody on my floor who was quite surprised because she said we're data people down here <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know we had anybody down here in the basement. but yeah. also no one else is near you there no, is absolutely no, 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 no. on my own I think they clearly think I'm a troublemaker let's get him as far away as possible you know if I was a cynical person I might say that it's because you know I've, I've been quite open about my views on the lack of diversity and inclusivity in the parliament here but hey, 
I'm not that cynical. I'm, I don't know about you, you lot, but you know, we, how long? How long have we been here? Two days. Two days. Yeah. It feels like about two months. Yeah. It does. Um, yeah. And it has been relentless. And so, Martin, do you want to just say t something about? We are actually working really hard. Yeah, yeah so that there's, there's this conception that we've come here, we've stood up within a childish, you know, pure art protest, and, uh -huh. and, and we've gone to the bar. And actually, in fact, we've been having tons of meetings behind the scenes, because as you know, um, we, we haven't been able to join a group, and that's actually through choice. It's really yep. important people yep. understand yep. the way that the European Union works. You're forced into coalitions, and oftentimes they're with people that you don't necessarily share views with. Mm. Nigel Farage had a really important decision to make. Do we get into bed with people that are going to get us bad press back home, the far right? We chose not to do that. Mm. We, we took the moral high position. We did, and I think that's that's true for all of us as candidates and our MEPs, is that we fought this on democracy. We fought yeah, this for absolutely. what is right. Yeah. Yeah. And so in that grouping, it was very important to us that we, that we could literally put our heads above the parapet yeah. and say we are happy with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, and even though it meant sitting at the back and even though it meant less speaking time, yeah. for me it was about principle because I'm yeah. fed up of politicians compromising mm. principle for political gain. Yeah. And yeah. we wanted to stand up and say, no, this is fresh, this is new, we are a movement, mm. not just an event. <laughs> and, and this is about changing politics and sticking by your principles. Now, the, the irony is, we're, we're the biggest single party in the entire blooming place, and they put us on the back row yeah. Yeah. in this chunk in the corner. But because they you, don't want us here. But as yeah. you've seen, we can still dominate the entire press Parliament. cycle. Yeah. We can still run, run the roost by being clever and by yeah. being defiant and being refused to be silenced. And also the back turning for me, you know, what, what worries me about the EU is they use this tactic to conflate the EU, any criticism towards the EU yeah. with criticising Europeans and yeah, Europe. Right, yeah. And it's very dangerous because what it means is as soon as you criticise the EU, they can say oh, xenophobic, yeah. anti-Europe. Yeah. Mm. We're not anti-Europe, we're not anti-Europeans, they're our friends and allies. Mm. We, want, we reject the EU political institutions, that yeah. needs to be made clear. Our Big protest difference. yesterday was about the EU political institutions, not our EU friends, mm. our Absolutely. European friends. Absolutely, well said. And I, I, I think it's important that people understand how this parliament works. Yeah, you know, it is. And, and, and we do get a lot of stick. People because people don't know in England. No, yeah. they, they don't. don't. They, they don't. have no clue. They, 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 mm. they don't understand. And I, I think that, um, you know, all of us have got stick about, you know, what we're going to do here, or we're just going to sit back and take our money. But, you know, as Martin said, we've been working really hard, mm. and I expect it to continue like that. And we can make sure that the people back home know exactly what's happening. Mm. Okay, so time is time. But I... So on the upside, there are some there are some nice things about being here. Yeah. Yes. You can see how you get yeah. something, can't you? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, just yeah, very yeah. quickly tell people what what we get. Uh, Chauffeur-driven cars, uh, chocolates, um, as many members of staff really as we like within a quarter of a million pounds a year. I mean, uh, I mean, you it, have to like a chauffeur-driven yeah. limo. It just, yeah. it is unbelievable. You yeah. get treated like kings here, and I think it's a way of turning your sceptics into the club. It's almost like being bought. Yeah, yeah. And, and you turn up. You, turn up <laughs> <laughs> you basically turn up to your office. What's in your bag, Martin? You get a free rose, and, they, and someone gave you a rose. And they're, yeah, yeah, they're bribing us. There's no. free champagne, yeah. and this is my favourite. There's bags of chocolates. Yeah. But this is my throat. David and I found this in our mailbox. We got a blooming invite to meet the Dalai Lama. Way! And, and, this, wow. and this is day two. But, but, yeah. but, 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 now, but before we get too sort of jokey about yeah. it, the entire point of this yeah. is to make us feel important. Yeah. It's to make us feel part of this empire. Yeah. It's to make us enslaved yeah. to the luxury yeah. Yeah. of what this place is. so does. easy yeah. to get sucked in. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is why you can have a nice 20 year career. Signing on the dotted line, 300 euros a day, champagne, Dalai Lama, chocolates. Who wouldn't want to do it if you're Absolutely. pro EU? It's a charade. Mm. And we do not want to be a part of it, and we cannot be bought with these trinkets. Mm. Absolutely. And that is a very good place to stop. You know, our job is to get us out of the EU, and our job right now is to get us out of this place. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And we'll uh, see, and, uh, see you again very soon. Yeah, great. Cheers, Cheers to the vote. Cheers. Right. Yeah. 17.4. <laughs>